In this video, I'm going to add a roof to our shed. Notice that the roof is sloped on two sides and that there are gable ends. Also notice that there's an overhang all the way around and the overhang is one foot on all sides. I'm going to start out by specifying the outline of my roof. Uh, first of all, in my bro project browser, I'm going to go to my floor plans and I'm going to select top of plate. In my architecture ribbon, I'm going to select roof. Under my properties, I'm going to choose basic roof generic 9 inch. I'll come back and edit the roof type later. I'm going to specify the outline of the roof. In my draw menu, I'm going to choose this tool, pick lines. I'm going to pick these reference lines, but I'm going to use an offset like I mentioned at the beginning. I'm going to use a one foot offset. Set offset to one. And I'm going to check this box, define slope. And as I mentioned earlier, the longer sides are going to be sloped. I'm going to position my cursor on this reference line just a little bit to the left. And it draws an offset line there. I'm going to position my cursor just a little bit to the right of this reference plane. Draws that line there. Notice these little triangles. It indicates that there is a slope associated with this edge and that the slope is 9 inches over 12 inches. I'm going to turn Define Slope off and pick just a little bit above this reference plane and a little bit below this reference plane. I'm going to trim these corners off. I'm going to select this tool here, the Trim Extent to Corner tool, and I'm going to point to the segments of the line that I want to keep. I want to keep this segment, that one, here and here, here and here, here and here. I'm going to finish by selecting the green check. I want to. I also want to point out that if you come to your properties menu and scroll down, you can see that your the slope of your roof is specified here. In this case, it's 912. If you do not see the slope specified in pitch, nine inches over 12 inches. If it's shown in degrees, you can modify that if you come up to Manage, the Manage ribbon, and come to Project Units, and you can change the slope units here. I have specified rise over 12 inches. If yours is set to anything else, you could change it to rise divided by 12 units here. I'm going to go back to creating my roof footprint. Select this green bar here. And I'm done specifying the roof footprint. I'm going to go ahead and select the green check. And there's my roof. If you go to 3D mode, you can see that there is your roof. I'm going to go ahead and edit the roof type. I'm going to point to the roof and select it and then select Edit Type. Select Duplicate and change the name to Shed Roof. Select Edit. I'm going to specify the material for Layer 2. Go to your Material Browser and scroll all the way down to Structure, Wood, Joist, Rafter, Layer, Bat, Insulation and change the thickness to, to 7 and a quarter inch. The documentation calls out for an 8 inch rafter and if you were to go to Home Depot and actually measure a 2 by 8 piece of lumber 
the width is seven and a quarter inch. I'm going to position my cursor at layer two, and I'm going to insert. And this new layer, it's it's going to be plywood sheeting. I'm going to specify the material. Open my material browser. I'm going to look for plywood. Plywood sheeting. Select it. I'm going to specify the thickness to one half inch. I'm going to position my cursor at layer one, and I'm going to insert two layers. I'm going to specify this as a, a membrane layer. And then I'm going to specify the material. I'm going to specify this material roofing membrane. I'm going to right mouse button and duplicate it. And I'm going to call it roofing felt. With the new material specified, I'm going to go look for roofing felt in my Autodesk material library. I'm going to select that. I'm going to type, I'm going to search for felt. I'm going to select this right here, this felt layer. Close this window. And the reason I do that, the reason I go to the library and specify the material is because it, it fills in all this information for me, all the, this uh, thermal information all the thermal properties. I'm going to select OK. I'm going to change this outer layer to a finish layer. Finish 2. I'm going to change the material. And I'm going to make this an asphalt shingle. I'm going to search for asphalt shingle. I believe it's in the library right here. I'm going to select it. I'm going to uh, set the thickness to one quarter inch. I'm going to go back here to the roofing felt. It's very thin. It's thin like paper. I'm going to leave the thickness at zero and because it's a membrane layer red will allow me to leave it at zero. I'm finished specifying the structure of my roof. I'm going to select OK. Now that Revit has calculated the thickness of my roof, it's 8 inch. I'm going to go ahead and rename my roof. And rename it to Shed Roof 8 inch. Select OK. Now if I deselect my roof, you can see that the roof has a finish of asphalt shingles. I'm going to go to my elevations and go to my south elevation. Notice that the roof is actually floating in the air and I'm going to select the roof and using my down arrows I'm going to lower it a bit. I'm going to zoom in and I in in the actual design this roof will be the joist will be resting right on the corner of the roof on the stud wall. If it actually overlaps, it'll give you an error in the next step. So get it really close, but don't let it touch. Now if I go back to 3D mode. I'm going to attach my walls to the roof. I'm going to hover over one of the walls, select Tab and it'll highlight all the walls selected, and I selected all four walls. I'm going to choose this command, Attach Top to Base. I'm going to point to the roof, and Revit attaches all the walls to the roof. If I deselect it, you can see that all the walls are attached to the roof. Now I'm going to create a drawing. I'm going to come down to Sheets and select it. Right mouse button. New sheet. And select this format here, B1117, and it'll have PLTW in the title. If you do not see this selection on your list, 
go to load and go to your documents folder and I've placed a copy of this file in your documents folder you'll find it there and select OK I'm going to place views on this sheet but I'm going to make them custom views I'm going to go back to my project browser and select floor my floor plan a right mouse button and duplicate the view and there's a selection called duplicate with detailing and I'm going to select that so now I've created this duplicate view and I'm going to rename it select rename on the pull down menu and I'm going to call it floor plan now these views here the ones I've been using are working views and I add all sorts of details you can add dimensions and other other things on these views but you do not want them to appear on your drawing so this floor plan view that I just created is going to be specifically for my drawing and I'm going to delete all the details that I do not want to appear on my drawing I'm going to hide my reference planes I'm going to select one reference plane and then come down here and this little icon temporary hide isolate and I'm going to hide the category I'm going to come down to my show crop region and I'm going to show my crop region and when I add this to my view this is actually what's going to print this entire region here I do not want the entire region to print I do not want this entire region to print I want to uh, crop it so I'm going to select the crop region and what I want to print on my drawing and I'm going to crop the view So this is the area that's going to print on my drawing. And now I'm going to turn off my crop region, hide my crop region. If I go down now to my sheet, the sheet I just created, open it up, and go up to my floor plan, the floor plan I just created, and now I can drag it onto my drawing and I'll place it right there. Here's my crop region that I just created and you notice that it adds a, a title block underneath the view. I'm going to come down and open up my 3D view. This is my standard working drawing 3D view. Uh, once again I'm going to duplicate it, duplicate the view duplicate it with details and I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call it 3D view go to my 3D view once again I'm going to show my crop region and I can edit it that's about where I want it just like that To go back to my drawing to my sheet a 102 select it I'm going to grab my new 3d view I'm going to place it on my drawing place it right about there and one thing I noticed I did not do I need to go back to my 3d view and hide my crop region back at my crop view now and I'm going to hide my crop region and you'll notice that if I go back to my sheet my crop region is hidden. I'm going to go ahead and edit my titles put your name in this field come here to the title of this sheet double click on it and call this cover page I'm going to export my drawing to PDF Come up to the R and select print. 
select properties. Go to layout and verify that the layout is in landscape mode. Come down to select and it'll give you a list of all the sheets available. We only want to print out this one, the one we just created, A102. Select that. We're not going to print out to a printer. We're going to print out to PDF. Select Adobe PDF and select OK. It's going to ask you a question if you want to turn off your hidden items, and we don't want to turn them off. We want to leave them on. Specify the location of your file. And here's the PDF drawing. Go to Canvas and submit this drawing to complete your assignment. 